What is up everyone? It is that time of year again. It is time to install the next version of the Mac operating system, which is now called Mac OS as opposed to Mac OS X, which is really cool, I think. Um, I like it a lot because it sort of has that retro sound to it. Um, but I'll talk about one thing that I don't like about this change. So here we are in the App Store and I'll just zoom in so that I don't have to waggle the camera close to... Oh, damn it, it's done a slideshow thing. That's annoying. Now, this is what I don't like, this formatting, the way it's written. So, pre-OS 10, it was written properly with a capital M, A, C, space, OS, with capitals. Now, I know, before anyone shouts at me, I know why they've done this. The whole reason for ditching OS 10 is to go with the continuity of so-and-so product that Apple offer followed by OS in capitals. So they have iOS, which is obviously a small i with a big OS. However, they've just applied that formatting to any word in front of OS, including Mac. So it's like watch OS, Mac OS, iOS. And I just don't like the look of that. I don't think that looks nice. And it's just another thing that Apple have done. Look, you've got a capital M here for, you, for Mac. What can your Mac do now? Obviously, because, you know, Mac is a product. It's a product name. It's going to have a capital. And then we've got a small M here. I just don't like it. I think it would be much classier if it was capital M, AC, space, OS. And then you'd still have continuity because verbally it, you'd say Mac OS, Watch OS, iOS. They'd all sound the same. It would just look better written down. So um, that's my first gripe that I'm going to talk about in the video. But this video isn't about Apple's um, formatting decisions. This video is about me installing this on my MacBook Pro. So um, yeah, a lot of you are probably disappointed that this is not going to be um, based on the Hackintosh, obviously, because uh, that's the more exciting platform for me to install this operating system on. But as with anything, it's better to test it on a proper Mac first. I mean, I've got no intentions of installing this OS on my Hackintosh in the near future. Um, if it's really good and I like a lot of things about it, then I'll think about doing it in the next two or three weeks and devoting you know, a couple of days to make sure I get it right. But for now, we're just gonna bung it on the MacBook Pro and see what happens. So obviously here it is in the App Store. Uh, it came out yesterday, I believe. It's the 21st today, so it came out on the 20th. Um, so yeah, we're just going to download it and um, while it downloads, I'm maybe going to try and do a bit of a backup because I haven't got Time Machine running on this. Um, I've got big backup and storage issues at the moment, folks. I've just been waiting to get my NAS built, but it's really, really been dragging out. Let me pull the brightness down a bit so it doesn't quite throw the camera into a crazy mode. So one cool thing um, that I'd like to mention, oh, what's this? This is interesting. Enter the verification code sent to your other devices. Oh, I thought that was really cool. Awesome. Uh, save password. You can see how much I use the App Store on, uh, on this computer, uh, which is like pretty much never. I've even got terms and conditions to accept. Okie dokie. All oh, right, yeah, I've read. Agree. <laughs> Congratulations. You've accepted new terms of service. Start shopping. So it's finally downloading. Um, 22 minutes remaining. Now, this is one cool thing. This is the first time I've downloaded and installed a new operating system uh, since moving. And as you guys know, this would have taken like half a day with my previous internet connection. But now it can just zip down as quick as it likes and uh, I can get it installed. So considering this is a fairly modern MacBook Pro and I've got a speedy internet connection, this should be a really, really quick seamless process and I know next to nothing about this OS. For those of you who are curious as to my um, current Apple knowledge, it is actually quite patchy. Um, you know, when previous um, versions of Mac OS came out, you know, OS 10, I was really in there, I knew all the new features. Um, I, just l I just found it extremely exciting. But for the last quite a few considerable amount of versions, I've had next to no interest in the majority of features that they add. Um, I'm not sure if that's because the features are becoming less relevant um, or whether I'm just sort of changing and those little things don't bother me as much. 
you know, these days it's more about what I can use my computer for as a tool as opposed to what my computer is as a standalone device, if that makes any sense. But of course, um, I do feel that innovation really, really slowed down after Snow Leopard. Um, obviously, we've seen loads of features combined with all of the previous versions. We've seen loads of new features since Snow Leopard. But what I mean is, with uh, Leopard in particular, you know, that was one hell of a jump. Um, it introduced loads and loads of things that we couldn't live without today. And um, I just feel like the upgrades aren't that exciting anymore. But I'm going to sort of reserve judgment until this installs um, because I'm going to give you my first impressions and thoughts. And uh, I can't even remember what the heck is new in the OS. Okay, so it's fully downloaded. Um, it took a crazy little amount of time. Normally, I'd take um, I'd take the DMG and save it, but uh, there's no there's no real point because when I come to install it on the Hackintosh, I'll just download it again. Um, so agree, agree. That's where I want to install it. I think pretty much gone are the days of uh, fresh installs with these operating systems. I mean, there's not even really a legitimate option to allow you to do a fresh install. Um, whereas before, the upgrade and install, or the archive and install, um, which is the upgrade path, was the default. But there was a, uh, an option to tick in the installer for a fresh install. But obviously these days, you know, the, the OS, the new OS is located on your drive, so it makes things a bit more complicated, whereas back then you'd have a DVD. But I mean, these processes are so simple now and just so sort of underwhelming that it doesn't feel as if you're installing a new OS. So I'll just wait for this to do its thing and uh, keep you guys updated. So we've got one of these screens that shows off the, uh, the dirt on my MacBook, which is always welcome because it's nice to have a reminder to clean the damn thing once in a while um, so yeah it just restarts and goes to this and uh, it's just installing so that is that back in the day when uh, OS 10 was installing you'd have your menu bar and everything and I remember one of the most exciting things about installing Leopard from Tiger was the fact that while this was installing, and it used to take you know a good 45 minutes on most hardware, while it was installing, it gave you the Leopard menu bar. So it was just like teasing you um, before you could actually get into it because Leopard looked drastically more modern than Tiger at the time. And uh, even though Leopard probably looks pretty old school now to, to most people, it was so cool to be able to see your menu bar. And it was really exciting back in the day because I was stuck on Tiger for so long because Leopard was so damn expensive. Uh, but when I finally got it, it was like, oh man, that is awesome. But yeah, these days you just get a black screen, um, which is, you know, simplistic and it keeps with the whole iOS theme. I updated my iPad the other day to iOS, whatever we're on now. And um, yeah, it was a similar affair. So it's nice that you get a, a sort of pretty much identical process across all of your Apple devices. You know, they're really nailing the continuity thing, which is cool. And I just spent a little bit of time reading over some of the features in this operating system. And over the last few versions, a good few operating systems now, um, Apple have been trying to merge iOS and macOS and, you know, make the, the user experience much more uniform across the two platforms. And we're getting to the point now where it's merging on a really, really active level. You know, with the whole copy and paste thing, um, that is a really, really heavy integration, which is so cool. And uh, Apple Pay and things like that. So um, yeah, let's, uh, before I talk about the operating system, let's wait until it's installed. So all of a sudden, um, after turning around, I noticed that I was back at my login screen. So let's log in and see what the heck happens. Okay, here we go, time to find out if anything broke. It needs my Apple ID. Terms and conditions again. Agree, agree. iCloud. Okay, first new feature that we see here. Enable Siri, why the heck not? Enable Siri on this Mac. Continue setting up your Mac. And that looks like we are there. Okay, let's quit out of a few of these 
things that have popped up. So just triple confirming, of course, the upgrade worked Mac OS Sierra. And there's the new picture, which looks very nice. And for anyone that cares, there is the info about my MacBook Pro. Um, it's a late 2013 2GHz i7, nice machine, still does really well. Um, so yeah, here we are in the new OS. I thought there was a Siri icon in the top corner there. How do you activate Siri then? Let's have a look. Hold option space, apparently. So let's see what it does. Siri, can you tell me some new features about Mac OS Sierra? So there's no built-in Sierra guide in Siri, we know that much. One thing we could do is check if my Pro apps work, because naturally I am several versions behind, and sometimes when I upgrade or update the OS rather, I end up with uh, broken Pro apps. But no, this appears to, to actually boot it up really quick, Final Cut. Let's see if Photoshop works, because my version of Photoshop is practically ancient by today's standards. That pinged up just fine. What about Logic? Our oh, Logic doesn't work properly on this machine anyway because I haven't downloaded the... Oh no, yes it does. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. So the three Pro apps that I use regularly appear to be working, which is good. Um, Guys, I can't really notice any difference. i tell you what we'll do just to get in the swing of things. There we are, folks. That's better. No new OS update is complete without the new wallpaper. So I've just been reading a couple of features online, and apparently now uh, every app has tabs, or, you know, close to every app. So let's try Maps, because that's the example they had online. So apparently now you can press Command-T... Oh, sweet, and you can navigate tabs, which is really cool. That's awesome. Um, that'll be especially handy in text edit, because I use text edit a lot, and I've um, often got multiple documents open at the same time. So, T, oh, Command T in text edit still launches font. That's weird. Command N, that's new document. Uh... Maybe you can't do it in text edit then. I swear I saw online that you could. Show tab bar. View, show tab bar. New tab. Okay, so yeah, there are tabs in text edit, but the command T command still brings up the font dialogue. You know, this is exactly the type of thing I'm talking about, guys. When Leopard came out, um, we were excited about Time Machine. We were excited about Spaces. We were excited about Quick Look, you know, huge, um, massive, uh, was it called Quick Look? Yeah, I think it's called Quick Look. Huge, massive um, OS changes that really, really matter. And now I'm talking about tabs in a, in a little notepad um, text edit application. Um, but yeah, don't get me wrong, folks. It's a nice little upgrade, especially for people that are heavy uh, Apple Watch users, as you can see. I do not own an Apple Watch. Um, and also for iOS users, as I was saying earlier, much, much deeper iOS integration now with the whole copy and paste thing, which I haven't tried yet, um, but that's really cool. Also changes to iCloud and iCloud Drive. Also, there's this new storage management thing, which shows you, uh, let's have a look. Yeah, this is cool. So reduce clutter, sort through documents and other content stored on this Mac and delete what is no longer needed. Obviously, I'm never going to press that button. Empty trash automatically, optimize storage, save space by automatically removing iTunes films and TV programs that you already watch from this Mac. Oh my word. Okay, store in iCloud. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this is, this is, you've got to be careful territory here. But it's nice to have a storage, a built in storage management system to OS X. You can see exactly what everything is using here in terms of gigabytes, you know, mail over five gigs you could sort all that um you know it's pr pretty interesting that but um yeah nothing nothing mind-blowing but i do like that and for people that aren't so precious about 
what they keep on their system and stuff. And for heavier iCloud users, I can see that being pretty cool. Another thing that I've noticed is Siri is actually in the dock. I swear that I swear that in the preview, Siri was in the menu bar, but maybe, maybe not. Um, but yeah, Siri's in the dock. I'm not gonna use him, her, whoever you are. You know when you say that, it should say, okay, would you like to disable me in your system preferences? Can you disable yourself? Turn Siri off. Sorry, Tom, I can't do that. Can you change my wallpaper? Hmm, okay. What is the processor speed of this Mac? Your Mac has a 2 gigahertz Intel Core i7 processor. So again, just like iOS, you know, there's not much depth to Siri. Um, you know, simple things like, yes, he will open things for me, but, um, let's try a couple of accessibility things with Siri. Can you zoom in, please? I'm sorry, Tom, I'm afraid I can't do that. See, that would be a really, really good use for Siri on your Mac. I don't know if any of you guys have been on the website, the Apple site, um, lately. But I thought I'd just pop on here before uh, finishing the video to see if there were any features that I wanted to cover. And check this out, guys. If you scroll down, you scroll out. And obviously I'm using a, a, a clicky mouse, but I assume if you did this with a smooth trackpad, you zoom out of the machine, which is awesome and definitely my favorite thing about this operating system so far and that is the web page advertising it but look at that that is just brilliant a li brilliant little bit of uh, of design there or whatever you want to call it animation whatever hey folks surprisingly i've covered most of the key features in this crappy little video so we've got a lot of chatting about siri here and all the different things you can say to siri then we've got copy and paste from your devices. You've got this really cool thing if you've got an Apple Watch, if you open your Mac and you're wearing your watch, it'll sort of log in for you. Um, nice little time saver there. Your desktop and documents folder, now accessible on other devices via iCloud, which is pretty handy, I quite like that. Apple Pay on the web with your phone and your Mac, so more integration there between iOS, of course. The storage thing that we spoke about. Uh, photos, new, um, memories in the photos app I'm, i don't really use the photos app at all we've got the new conversation smileys and probably all the effects that they showed off at the apple event uh, in the uh, in the iMessage there apple music i don't have apple music then we have the tabs that i spoke about and that is pretty much it so they are all the features that they are highlighting and uh yeah maybe this wasn't the correct video to make because most of those features don't appeal to me in any kind of way, but still very cool stuff that Apple are doing. You know, sometimes when I make a video about an Apple thing that I'm not particularly thrilled about, some people can take that in such a way that I'm kind of dissing Apple. And yeah, Apple do a lot of things these days that make me sort of shake my head, but that's just my opinion. And as the years go by, the relevance that Apple has in my life is changing because of the direction that they're taking and because of the direction that I'm taking. I use their computers because I think they're fantastic and, you know, but um, that doesn't mean that the things that I don't use, I think, are crap. It doesn't mean that, you know, all this integration and Apple ecosystem and all the things that you can do with your iPad and iPhone and Mac all together and stuff, it's very powerful stuff. It's really cool stuff that works incredibly well for the people that want to use it. I don't use it and uh, I think now because I'm several generations behind in terms of knowing what the latest features are with all of these clever things, I think it would be a pretty steep learning curve for me to start doing all that stuff now. Um, but there we are, that is that. I've installed it, it's working, I still appear to have all of my documents and the rest is history. So that is that folks. It's about time I made a sort of Power PC or Retro Apple video um, because I'm afraid that with this sort of stuff, there's not a lot I can say. I don't really have much of an opinion. I've installed the operating system. I'm happy with it. The wallpaper is stunning and uh, that animation on the website is damn cool. So beyond that, 
The rest is for you guys to decide. I hope you've enjoyed this random little upload. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.